Praise God, guys. Welcome to the After 14 service. Um, I pray that as we worship, as we praise the Lord, we'll be blessed. And at this time, as we, as we worship, may God minister in your heart and uh, be blessed.
service for today uh, manze karibu tu sana na i hope mtaji nice na pia kwa uko hapo na watch make sure unafuata kwenye pasikamata sema eh uh, tena uko pale tu na notebook pale na kabairo na pia uh, sao kauja kuoka pia come church cuz each day we are learning new things from the bible eh uh, hakuna time hakuna time wewe kama muk great tu kama mimi hapa chachiko eh uh, manze usisahau pia kama na mabeste wote na as as we we'll start i hope pia mulijinize nice. ya yeah, tena pale kwa happy manzee wacha happy kwetu bado kwa chachiko kama tuna kila inseko wote wote tu kamini tu anyway i hope you are blessed as we have worshiped and praised the lord we will now welcome pasikama ya yeah, tumkaribishe manzee mighty father we come before you this day mighty father thank you for everything mighty father as you said in isaiah 54 No we shall prosper among your people almighty father even what pass is going to preach to us almighty father let it stick to our brain almighty father even those who are not have not been born again almighty father bring them unto the church so that they can be born again almighty father it is jesus name we do praise him living amen hello guys welcome to our service today my name is pastor anthony kamau today i want to share the word of god from the book of john chapter number 7 verse 1 to 9 and the topic of today is avoid trouble and as i shared the word of god it's a long passage so we'll just read bit by bit as i, I explain the sermon so verse number 1 of john chapter number 7 verse 1 says after this jesus went around in galilee purposely staying away from judea because the jews there were waiting to take his life we see that jesus purposely avoided judea because the Jews there wanted to take his life and the thing is Jesus had power to encounter his enemies this i say because Jesus is greater than any one of us and when you read the bible we see great men we read of great men who did great things we read of Samson who killed many Philistines so i believe even Jesus could have killed those who wanted to kill him he could have killed those who wanted to attack him but he chose to stay out of trouble the amen other men like david whom we read in the bible he won very many battles he killed the enemies in fact the time came when david wanted to build uh, the temple for the lord and god said that you have killed so many people you have shed a lot of blood because david killed a lot of men and i believe if david was capable of killing men by the power of god then jesus himself could have also done the same he would have killed his enemies but he chose to avoid trouble we read of moses moses delivered the children of israel out of captivity he delivered a whole nation i believe even jesus had the power to deliver himself from from the hands of the enemy but again he chose to stay away from trouble we read of elijah who asked for fire to strike men that had been sent by Ahab to him he called fire from heaven and that fire struck them dead i believe jesus had the same power to ask for fire to strike men who were against him but he chose to stay out of trouble what about elisha we know that one day the armenian king sends sends send his troops to come and capture elisha and elisha blinded them all 
Even Jesus, I believe he had the same power to blind his enemies. Those people in Judea who wanted to kill him, he had the power to blind them. But again, he chose to stay out of trouble. Today the message is that we need to avoid trouble. Even when you look in the book of John, when you study the book of John, when uh, they came to arrest Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, we are looking for Jesus. It is there in the Bible that they, they fell after he said, I am he, they all fell. So I believe even those people who wanted to attack Jesus, he had the power to make them fall. He had the power to make them fall and make sure that they don't arrest him or kill him for that matter. But he didn't use that power. He chose to stay out of trouble. In the book of Matthew, again, the guards come to arrest Jesus because the time had come for him to be arrested. But Peter removes his sword and cuts off one of the guard's ears. Jesus picks up the ear of this man and puts it back on his head. And Jesus says to Peter, don't you know that I can ask my, my father for 12 legions of angels to come and protect me? That shows that Jesus had power, but he chose to stay out of trouble. The Bible says that he purposely avoided Judea. But this he did, even though he had all the power. Now, in the same way, let's go about our businesses and purposely choose to stay out of trouble. With that list I've shown you of many things that Jesus could have done to his enemy, but he chose not to do so. He chose to stay out of trouble. He chose not to confront the enemy. And today, as you go about your business, my advice is that in the same way, let's go about our business and purposely choose to stay out of trouble. We need to stay out of trouble. The, uh, the, the key word here is purpose. You have to be determined. It is for you to decide that I'm not going to do this. I'm going to avoid this road because the consequences are that I will land myself into trouble. So I avoid that road. I do what is right. So you have to purpose to avoid trouble at all costs, no matter who you are. Let's take an example. Maybe you are in school. Maybe you're supposed to do your homework. And you know that if you don't do your homework, it's going to land you in trouble. The message is you have to avoid trouble. So you have to do your homework and purposely avoid falling, avoid trouble. Avoid being in bad books with the teachers because you didn't do your homework. Avoid being punished by your teachers because you failed to do your homework. Let's say you are in class and people are making noise. It is up to you to decide and to purposely avoid making noise because you know at the end of the day, if you're making noise in class, it's gonna land you in trouble. Let's say you have gone back at home and you're supposed to wash the dishes and you know that if you don't do so, then it's going to land you in trouble if your parents will come and, be, and, and make noise at you or even punish you for not doing whatever it is that you're supposed to do, be it washing dishes or any other chores that are there at home. So it is for you to avoid that trouble. It is for you to purposely avoid that which will lead you into trouble. So we are talking about avoiding trouble, and I believe that we need to do so every day in our life. This story that we have just read in the book of John, chapter number 7, verse number 1, is what we learn from Jesus. And I believe Jesus did everything that he did so that we can learn from him. And the lesson here is, let's avoid trouble. Let's avoid doing this that will lead us into trouble. So in verse number 2, let's continue reading. Verse number 2 to five. This is what the Bible says. But when the Jewish feast of tabernacle was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, you ought to live here and go to Judea so that your disciples may see the miracles you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world, for even his own brothers did not believe in him. Here we see Jesus doesn't want to go to the Feast of Tabernacles just because the enemy wants to kill him. So he's avoiding going there. Eventually we'll see that he went to the Feast of Tabernacles. But at this moment he was avoiding to go because there was, there was the enemy who wanted to attack him. And his brothers were giving him advice. They were telling him that he needs to show himself publicly because he, he wants to be a public figure. So he needs to show himself 
if he's a public figure, then he needs to show himself. But Jesus knew that by him showing himself publicly, then he will be killed by the Jews who are waiting for the opportunity to do so. And so he did not show himself publicly, even though his brothers were giving him advice. And what you need to understand is that not all advice is good advice for you. For example, in the book of First Kings, there's a story of a young prophet and the old prophet. So the young prophet is sent by God to go and prophesy in the land of Bethel. And he goes there, but God told, tells him that when you go to Bethel, do not eat or drink anything in that land. Don't even use the same road that you use to enter that place. So you have to go back by a different route. Don't eat or drink anything after you prophesy. So the young man obeys God. But then there's an old prophet who, who heard that there was a young prophet who came and prophesied in that land. And he ran to him and he pursued the young prophet. And he told him, come back to my place and have a, have a drink, have a bite and have a drink. And the young prophet says, no, God told me not to do so. In fact, he even told me not to use the same route that I've used coming to this place. But the old prophet managed to convince him. He said, there's an there's a angel up here to me, and he has told me that you need to come with me and eat in my house. That's the advice that the old prophet gave to the young prophet. And we know the story. Once the old young prophet went back and ate and drank in that place, and you, they even went back through the same road that he was told not to use, because he was supposed to use a different route from the one he had used earlier. When he went there, the Bible says that as he was going home, he was torn into pieces by a lion. Why? Because he listened to the old, old prophet's advice. And not all advice is good for you. The young man probably needed to consult God. Is it really you who has sent this man? Is it really you who has changed the story that now I need to eat instead of not eating and not drinking? He didn't consult God and he found himself in trouble. So not all advice is good for you. You have to look at the consequences of your actions. What will happen if I do A, B, C, D? What are the consequences of my actions? That is the question that you always need to ask yourself because not all advice is good for you. You have to weigh, you have to weigh, you have to look at the consequences because every choice has got its own consequences and you have to weigh the consequences of your actions. There is also good advice. When Joseph was called by Pharaoh, he came and interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. He also gave advice to Pharaoh that Pharaoh needs to find a man that will collect the food during the seven years of plenty and store the food so that this food will be used of seven years of drought. And that advice again was good. Joseph gave the advice to Pharaoh and the advice was good. And we can see by what happened. They had enough food not only for themselves, but for other people also who came to buy from them. So not all advice is good and not all advice is bad. We just have to, you just have to weigh your options. You just have to look at the consequences of whatever action that you're supposed to take. You just have to look at that and decide, should I say yes to this advice or should I avoid this advice at all? You also have to learn that you should avoid pressure. The Bible says in the verse number four that no one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. That's what the Bible, that's what the Jesus' brother was saying. When they say that no one, in other words, they're saying everyone who wants to become a public figure, that everyone who works in a public figure does not act in secret. But you have to understand as a young man and as a young woman that you are not just anyone and you are not everyone. Even God refers to people by their names. When you look at the book of Samuel, when Jesus, God appeared to Samuel, he, he called Samuel when he was a young boy, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel wakes up and runs to Eli because he thought Eli had called him. Again, it happened a second time, and Eli realized that it is God who is calling Samuel. So he told him, when again you are called, just say, here I am, Lord. Speak, your servant is listening. So God calls you by name. He calls Samuel by name. When Saul was on the road to Damascus, uh, was on his way to Damascus, and he was going to persecute Christians, when Jesus appeared to him, he called him Saul, Saul. He called him by name. So God calls you by name. God calls you by your name. 
when he called, he appeared to Moses on the burning bush, again he called his name Moses, Moses. So you are not just everyone and you are not anyone. You should not allow anyone to label you as someone. Or this is what it, which is being done by everyone at this particular moment. You are not everyone. You have a name and even God refers to you by your name. So you have to stick to your ground and do what you think is right. Avoid anything that will lead you into trouble and do that which you know that will be a blessing to you. Verse number 6 to 9 says this. That therefore Jesus told them, the right time for me has not yet come. For you, any time is right. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that what it does is evil. You go to the feast. I am not yet going up to this feast because for me, the right time has not yet come. Having said this, he stayed in Galilee. The thing here is time. The Bible says that there is a time for everything. And Jesus said that the time, the right time for me has not yet come. Again, it's not that Jesus didn't want to go to the Feast of Tabernacles, but he wait, wait, waited for the right time for him to go. And also for you, you have to know that there's always the right time to do something. Okay? Let's say that everyone is fornicating. Let's say that all young people are fornicating. That doesn't mean that you should also fornicate. Why? Because it is not the right time for you to indulge in such kind of activities. You, you have to wait for the right time. You have to wait for the right time. Because there are consequences that will come with fornication. You might get pregnant while you're still a teenager. Again, that's trouble for you and your family also. Because you're adding another family member into a family where you know, that family member is not even budgeted for. You know, and you have done that. So that is the consequence of fornication. And there are other consequences. Another thing is that when you fornicate, you're sinning against God. And when you sin against God, again, there are consequences that come with that, that kind of a sin. So people are fornicating, yes. Again, we said you are not everyone. So even if that is the norm around you, then you have to stand your ground and say, no, I cannot do this because it's not the right time for me to indulge in sexual activities. Because there's a right time for everything. But then again, if you get pregnant when you are married, when you have become of age and you, got, you get married, then we will even clap for you and celebrate with you because you're pregnant. But if you get pregnant because you're fornicating and you're young, we will feel sorry for you. We will even pray for you. We will even ask you to confess your sins before God. But no one will tell you to confess your sin before God because you've gotten pregnant when you're in marriage because it's the right time for you to get pregnant. Whatever acts that you're doing in marriage are allowed because it's at the right time and you followed the, the correct procedure and the correct process to do whatever it is that you're doing. So there's always the right time for everything. And you have to wait for the right time for you to do what you are supposed to do. You have to, look at, you have to look at the consequences of your actions and decide, is what I'm doing right now the right time for me to do it, or should I wait? If you're supposed to wait, then you wait. Then another thing is that you have to stand your ground. The Bible says that having said this in verse number 9, he stayed in Galilee. So you have to stand your ground. You have to say no to that which you believe is wrong. You have to say no to that which you know that is not a blessing to you, is not a blessing to your family. You have to stand your ground. Don't let people in intimidate you. And again, you have to remember that don't give all information. Don't even have spend a lot of time explaining to people why you're saying no to what they're asking you to do. Just say no. It is not godly. Because in the Bible, in the same passage that I've just read, verse number 20, Jesus explained, Jesus again, as you'll see, went to the Feast of Tabernacles. And so when he's speaking there in verse number 19, uh, he said that, Has not Moses given you the law? Yet no one of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? Verse number 20, they says, You are demon-possessed. The crowd answered, Who is trying to kill you? So sometimes when you try to explain into details of what is happening to you and why you cannot do what everyone else is doing, then they will think you're demon-possessed. They don't understand you. 
So when you tell them, they will even try to discourage you. These guys told Jesus that you are his demon possessed because they did not understand that someone wanted to kill Jesus. And they didn't see any reason why. But Jesus knew that they wanted to kill him. So sometimes you, you know your story. You don't have to explain every little detail to everyone. Just stick to your story. Say, no, I cannot do this because I'm a born-again Christian, and I believe that's enough. And uh, avoid trouble. Avoid trouble because that's the message of today. You have to avoid trouble at all costs. You have to run away from trouble. Verse number 10 says this, that, uh, however, after his brothers has left for the feast, he went also not publicly, but in secret. There are friends that you have to avoid. In this case, Jesus avoided his brothers. His brothers wanted him to show himself publicly, and Jesus knew that if I do this, there are consequences that will come with that. I will be killed. And he decided to go there secretly. So he avoided his friend, his, his brothers. He allowed them to go first, and then he later on went. And so there are friends in your life that you have to avoid, just like Jesus avoided his brothers. There are friends who will inf try to influence you to do certain things that you know they will lead you into trouble. And these friends, you have to avoid. If Jesus avoided his brothers in this case, then that means that even you, you, you should avoid friends who will lead you into trouble. That is what you need to do. You have to avoid friends who will lead you into trouble then you have to also understand that Jesus went in the, to the Feast of Tabernacle, just like I've read in verse number 10. But he went secretly, not publicly. So there is the right way to do everything. If, like we said, if you get pregnant because you fornicated as a young man and a young woman, then you did everything at the wrong time and in the wrong way. But if you wait for the process of you to get engaged and get married when you have come of age and get pregnant, then that is the right process. So Jesus' brother wanted him to show himself publicly. That for him was the wrong way to do it. The right way for him to do it was to go publicly. So it is wrong for you to get pregnant when you are young, but the right way and for the right time for you to, do, to get pregnant, and this is just an example that I'm giving, is when you are married. That is the right time you have become of age. And so in this life, even though people advise you on, on different things, you have to know that there is that advice which you take and follow, and there is that advice which you stay away from. You disregard. Because you have to understand that Jesus' brothers didn't believe in him. They didn't. That's what we have read in verse number five. So. If they didn't believe in him and they're advising him, then my, my thinking is that their advice is not given in good faith. And there are those people who will advise you and what they want to see is your downfall. And probably the old prophet that I've just mentioned advised the young prophet to do contrary to the will of God. Probably he wanted to see him mess up. And there are people who want to see you mess up, but the advice they give you, they just want to see you go down. They want to see you fail. They are not giving you that advice in good faith. They are just giving you that advice because they want to see you fail. And so you have to be very discerning and you have to pray to God to give you wisdom to understand which advice is good for me and which advice is not good for me. You have to look at the consequences of your actions and decide what you need to do and what you should not do. So guys, Today it's just avoiding, this message is avoiding trouble. And my prayer is that each and every one of you will try and avoid trouble at all costs. Anything that you see that will land you into trouble, just say no to it. Jesus was powerful, he could have gone to Judea and for those guys who wanted to kill him, but he chose to avoid confrontation. He chose to avoid trouble. And in the same way today, I want to encourage each and every one of you that any place that you see there is trouble, you have to learn to avoid that place. You have to purposely avoid that place. You have to purposely avoid any action that will land you into trouble because that is the will of God over our lives each and every single day. We are not saying that you should not do what you are meant to do. You should go about your businesses. But what you need to understand is that you have 
to purposely avoid trouble. Amen? And that's the word of God from me to you today. Amen. Yeah, my name is Eddie Swahome. Yeah, I come from KG. Mm, I'm among the team's members. Yeah, and as I can say, service is very good. Mm, I encourage you to my youth in Kopale to enjoy my area. I'm going to be here. 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 I'm going to be Sa, manze tena kila kitu unaweza kufanya. Youth team pale huko. Manze before everything kwanza nzia na prayer. Eh manze kila kitu iko to be here. Eh mimi naweza kusema. Na nafurahia tu kuwa sana kwa church. Eh eh my name is Sean O'Brien. Na leo ni kwa fiti tinsonya kuko home wana to watch pia wa come cuz we are learning new things each day na kau jokoka pia come okoke masani mbaya the viewers mwende hapo youtube channel yetu hapo kg teens after 14 m subscribe na m like all the videos na m come pia church yeah tunaweza di kaomba thank you lord for this day father tuna come to thanks father kusema tu ni asante kwa hizi kwa leo baba Manze adi manze leta tu wenzako baba manze ulisema tu mali tutanoko utatufungulia tu mamlango manze god na ulisema tu tuki ask utatupatia manze sisi ni my youth team pale my youngs father the coming generation manze tukumbuke tu manze tunakuneed tu kwa hiyo machache naomba na sema ni asante amen Nionyeshe uko wa roho wako we manafadhili zako nguvu ya mkono wako Nionyeshe uko wa roho wako we manafadhili zako nguvu ya mkono wako Nionyeshe uko wa roho wako we manafadhili zako nguvu ya mkono wako jithirishwe takungoja takungoja jithirishwe takungoja Dhirishwe Takungoja Takungoja Dhirishwe Takungoja Dhirishwe Takungoja Takungoja Dhirishwe Takungoja It's my joy to have